Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and today we're going to take a look at how to add controller and keyboard navigation to your game. So you don't have to do any movement with your mouse to interact with your menus. You can make a game wholly dependent on just using a controller or just using a keyboard. So I'm just going to show what I've got set up here, a very simple little menu. I'm going to press play here. Essentially this pause menu, you can see the game isn't actually paused at the moment, uh, but we'll talk about why this is set up like this in a moment. We've got simple resume, so I can resume and then I can hit pause and it'll bring it back up again. I've got a very simple options menu, this is just to demonstrate going into another menu. And this button that does nothing, that's just to allow us to be able to click on something uh, to demonstrate some other stuff. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens at the moment. So by default, when you set up a menu like this in Unity, if I go ahead and play my game here, if I'm using a controller, if I use my controller here now, I can press different directions and nothing happens. So if I go out of this pause menu and if I'm playing my game, running around or whatever, and I pause it, no matter what direction I press, nothing happens with my menu. So that's obviously not great at all. Now, one thing we can do with very static menus in Unity, so this won't work for a pause screen, but maybe for the main menu of your game, what you can do is go to the event system the event system is always generated when you create a new canvas in Unity. So the event system object, if you look over here in the event system component, there's a space here for the first selected. So this will be the first object that's selected when your scene starts. So I could go here and I could get this resume button, drop that in there. And now when I press play, you'll see, oh look, the resume button is highlighted. So now I could move up and down. And that would be really good. For example, on a main menu, that would work very well because you could just have your options for play the game or quit the game. But here in a pause menu or any other kind of menu, basically, this really won't work very well. So it, for example, if I go and resume now, so if I press the resume button and if I hit escape, oh, our highlight disappeared. But actually it's still there. So I just press down there. The first button, remains highlighted in it doesn't show up as highlighted but it remains selected according to unity so then when you press the direction it does work but obviously that's not great you want it to look like it's highlighted another issue is if i go into the options menu now oh i can't navigate this options menu i'm moving the directions in the background here and if i move upwards to the very top and hit enter you can see i was still working in that first menu system so if I just, to demonstrate that, if I just pause, just play it again here, I've just paused for a second. If I turn this options menu on and just drag it over to the side, I'll actually just leave this options menu deactivated. So if I resume here and if I turn on the options, you can see rather than going to this new options, I'm still highlighting in this menu. So we've got a bunch of little issues which are a problem. And another significant problem with this is if I have my pause menu off by default, and then press play. Now if I press the pause button, oh, that first item isn't even highlighted at all. So obviously you can see that the using the event system first selected, it can work in certain situations, but not every situation. And obviously we want a solution that will allow it to happen in every situation. And the way to do that is to explicitly control it through code. And it's really easy to do as well. So I'm going to go into the script I have set up for my menu. So I just have one little script here. If I open this up and all it has is some code for pausing the game. So you can see you can press a key button on the keyboard here, or if I press a button on the controller, it'll pause or unpause the game. It'll go in here and set that to be active or false. And then we also have the options here for opening the options menu and for closing the options menu, which is a button in the options screen itself. Okay, so we have all these here, but obviously we want to be able to control what happens in our menu. And how we do that, it, as, as I mentioned, in the event system here is what sets what's first selected, but this also keeps track of what's currently selected on your UI system in general. So what we're going to do is go back in here and up the very top, we're going to add using Unity Engine dot event systems. So we're able to access the event systems components of Unity. And then we'll tell the event system what object should be pressed. But how do we know what object should be pressed? Well, we need reference to the objects that we want to have active in our menus. So 
we're going to want three different objects for the menu I currently have set up. So I'm going to create a public game object. The first one we'll create is when we pause the game, the first button that should be selected. When we open the options menu, the options, oops, spell options correctly, options first button. So the first button we, pre we that should be selected when we uh, open the options menu. And then we'll finally have the options closed button. So this will be what's selected when we close out of the options menu. So let's go back in and just set them up first of all before we do anything else. So we'll save that, jump back into Unity, and go to my script over here. And we now have those empty slots. So I'm going to push the first pause button will be the resume because that'll be the top options on that menu. The first option in the options menu, if I just, I just activate it here for a second. Uh, rather than using the exit options button, let's say we'll go with the toggle up here. So I'm going to select the toggle and I'm going to make sure I have my script available again. Select the toggle and click and drag that in there. And then when we close out of the options menu, we want to have the button that will open the options being selected. So I'm going to grab the options button here and put that in there. Okay, let's deactivate these again. And let's make it actually do something in our code. So what we do is go back into our script and we're going to deal, first of all, what's the first one we'll deal with? Well, when we pause the game, what is the first button that comes up? In my code here is where we activate the pause menu. So I'm just going to go down below here. So this is turning the pause menu to be on and it's stopping time. And then what we're going to do is the first thing we need to do is remove any selected object from the event system currently. It's a weird quirk of this thing that you can't just directly set the object you want to use. You have to make sure it's emptied out first and then you set the object. I don't really understand why Unity does that, but it's just one of those little quirks. So I'm just going to say we're going to clear the selected object. So how we do that is just go into the event system dot current. So the current event system that's in use in the game. And we're going to set the selected game object. So we're setting the selected game object that's active on our UI to be null. So we're saying make sure there's no object selected. Then we're going to set a new selected object. I'm just writing comments so we know what's going on here. And we're going to say event system dot current dot set selected game object and what object we want to set when we first pause the game we want to set the pause first button so let's save this jump back into unity and see this in action let that compile and now when i play we should see when i hit escape there we go we get our resume button coming up so now if i close out of it and open it back up again every time we open the menu even if I move it down here, it returns to that first button that it should be when you pause the game. Okay, so that's great. So let's do the same then for our two other buttons. So let's go back in here. For when we open the options screen, I'm just going to copy all of this little section that we just wrote. When we open the options screen, we want to do the options first button. And then when we close the options screen, we want to use the, uh, let me just highlight this, options, closed button. Okay, so we'll save this and let's just verify that that all works because of course when you write any code, you should always be jumping back and making sure that it works. So if I pause it, if I go to my options menu, there we go, I got my toggle selected. And if I go to my exit options, there we go, we're back on the options screen here. So perfect. That works just the way we want to, but there's one extra important thing that is really vital to do when you're working with controller-based navigation and, and keyboard-based navigation, either way. So if I pause the game here, and, and if I go down to, I'm gonna move my mouse out of the way. If I go down to options here, and this is all fine, I'm all happy, I start on my toggle, and if I hit down, oh, well I move to my slider, but I hit down twice, and now I've lost. I'm, where, where are, my buttons. Why am I not highlighting any of these objects anymore? If I go over here and drag my options menu over to the side, 
like so. You'll see, oh, I'm back to selecting the menu over here. Uh, let me just click on this nothing again. So I can, if I can, I can move left and right and I can navigate between these various objects. And that obviously isn't great. So what's happening here? If I just pause this again and we go look at, let's look at this toggle here, for example. You can see these arrows here are how Unity is trying to work out where these objects are in relation to each other. So this toggle here, for example, you can press down and we go to this slider, or you could press left at the moment and we go to the resume button. And because these objects uh, previously were overlaid on top of each other, so if I just stop and start this again and go back into the options menu and pause again, here you can see, look at this, look at this mess of arrows. Unity doesn't know where everything is because as far as Unity is concerned, all these objects that are visually hidden are still active. Just because we can't see them doesn't mean they go away. So there's two ways we could fix this problem. What we could do is I could deactivate all those other buttons, like so, and then reactivate them when we go out of this menu. But obviously that's not really great. That doesn't feel good in general. So we're not really going to do that. Instead, what we can do is very explicitly tell Unity which object it should move when you move in a different direction or which button it should move to when you move in, in a different direction. So if I turn on my pause menu here and if I go to resume button, which is the top button, now it's automatically worked out these very simply because they're very basic. They're just three objects in a row, but we need to be able to tell it that, hey, just ignore the whatever setting you want to use. So what we're going to do is go over here to button component and down here where we have navigation here I'm going to set this to none to remove all those ticks and then I'm going to go into the bottom and select explicit like this and then we're going to say when you want to move down because the only way you can move from here is down go to the options button so now it knows okay if I press down go to the options button don't ever try to go to any other kind of button so we'll do the same thing for the options button here we'll go to uh, none and then explicit and we'll do the same. So when we go up, we go resume and down, we go nothing. Same again. So I'm just going to loop through all of these here doing this. It's very simple to do. We select on up like that. So we'll do the same thing then for the options menu. And this is much more important because we don't want to be able to go back to those objects that we can't even see. So here we're going to say none again and then explicit. And then from our toggle, when we move down, we're going to go to the slider. So down, we'll go to the slider. For the slider, we'll also go up to the toggle and down to the exit button. And then finally, the exit button we have will go up to the slider. And that's it. Very simple to do. So now if I hide this options menu and hide the pause menu, if I press play, when I pause it, I go down to my options, and now I can navigate between all of these perfectly, no matter if I press left or right. I'm gonna use the controller as well. When I press any direction, it moves these correctly. Obviously, if you press left and right on the slider, it'll move it up and down, which is what you want. But now we have full navigation with our menus working correctly. So we're pretty happy with that. That means that we don't have to worry about things getting deactivated, we're able to navigate through our menus without ever having to touch a mouse and it means your players won't get annoyed when they're playing your game and they have to switch from oh I'm playing with a controller but when I go into a menu I have to go and click everything that I want to do. So there you go, nice and simple to do but really important to make your games feel a lot better. So thanks for watching this video, I'll be back soon with more tutorial goodness and in the meantime keep being awesome.